And welcome everyone to another edition of the ETBU Sportsnet presented by our sponsors at Marshall Hometown Tire, Kenneth the K-Rock Klein, of course, and I hope that every one of y'all are continuing to follow the guidelines as we are still quarantined in our respective places. Uh, we had some big news that have happened at ETBU over this time. Uh, former ETBU men's head basketball coach Brandon Kern stepped down to take a role within the church ministry organization. So we wish him all the best and we thank him for his services there as well. In the meantime, ETBU has hired a new head men's basketball coach, and we are pleased to be joined by him as well. Former uh, Bossier, City, Bossier Parish Community College head coach Chris Lavelle joins us. And Chris, first off, welcome to your first interview on this. Yeah, no, thanks for having me, man. Excited to be here. Yeah, now, Coach, I'm just going to let you know in advance that we're going to make you a little more comfortable because usually our interviews involve us being in the Tiger Room on a coffee table, uh, to say the least. Obviously, this is a little bit bizarre circumstances, but fortunately, uh, we're going to make sure everything uh, is all right. But let's uh, let's go right into it, Coach. Uh, talk about uh, becoming the new head coach at ETBU. Well, no, obviously, we're very, very excited about the opportunity. Uh, you know, for us, it's a great fit. Uh, for who we are as believers in faith and in Jesus first and foremost, but it's a great fit too because it's a program that's a winning program. Coach Curran did such a great job with it. And, and so the ability to come in here and just continue to build on the foundation he laid is a, is a great opportunity for us. Um, and I think the sky's the limit. So we're very, very excited to get started and to kind of learn the campus and to kind of get to know the people and the players and, and to move into the future. Yeah, definitely. And I'm sure, I mean, you, you're currently working on campus as of right now, but what was it about uh, ETBU's campus that sort of drew you to want to be the head coach around here? Well, obviously, you know, the opportunity to be at a four-year school coming from a junior college was very, very appealing. You know, in JUCO world, uh, you basically coach kids for nine months and then they move on. You know, the, the most you have them is two years. And so the opportunity to come to a four-year school, invest in students' lives for four years versus, you know, the one year or two year ago, it was very appealing. The other thing that was very appealing about East Texas Baptist University is obviously there's a lot to sell here to recruits. It's in a it's in a great town in Marshall, Texas. It's uh, it's centrally located, you know, being about 45 minutes from Shreveport, Louisiana, and then, you know, 20, 25 minutes from Longview. You're kind of in the middle of that. Um, the other thing is that the campus is immaculate. It's beautiful. You know, uh, Ryan Irwin, the athletic director, President Blyburn, uh, they, they believe in excellence here, and that's what I'm all about. Um, but then lastly, the other thing that really attracted me to the position is that it's a, it's a belief-based uh, system and and for me that fits who I am personally as a believer in Jesus Christ. So very very excited. It's a great fit for me and my family, and we're ready to get started. Yeah, certainly. I uh, can't wait to see what goes on here as well. Uh, you come in with a pretty good resume. Championships in the past, three-time state champion at Prestonwood Ca Christian Academy, and then last year you took uh, Bozier Parish Community College to their first 21 season in 15 years as well. So you definitely have some experience. How do you think that's going to parlay into what you hope for the team for this upcoming season? Well, I mean, obviously, when you've won in the past and you've been able to build things successfully in the past, it gives you confidence walking into any scenario. You know, as the head coach of Prestonwood Christian, that was a winning program when I walked into it. Um, and uh, I was there as an assistant. Then I left for a year and went and rebuilt a program and then came back, and everybody said we wouldn't win, and we just kept winning. And so, you know, I think being a part of winning programs, building on winning programs is something I'll draw from in this position. But then also coming from Bossier Parish, it was a total rebuild. Um, and this situation here at East Texas, to answer your question, is not a total rebuild. Um, you know, they won. They had a great season last year. And so it's an opportunity. It's kind of like the Preston Wood experience of coming in and building on top of the great foundation that's already there and pushing the kids to go further. And, you know, what we want to do is win a championship. That's why I'm here. Um, and so we're very, very excited about that. Yeah, certainly. This kind of parlays into my next question as well. You come into a program that in two of the last three seasons reached a conference championship game. They're currently – they're without some of their top scorers from last season, but they do have some decent returners as well. So, expectations-wise, I mean, what are you most looking forward to coaching these kids who obviously have been accustomed to having some good success over the past few seasons? Well, as a, as a coach, you always want winners on your team, you know. And uh, to, the fact that we have 10 returners, 
uh, coming back from last year's team uh, that won 21 games and was in the conference championship game, um, that does nothing but bode well for our future. Uh, the confidence they're going to have stepping on the court, the increased roles that those guys will have will feed uh, into everything. But then also, um, it's the ability to go out and to get players to add to that mix uh, that maybe can put us over the top and maybe we have an opportunity to win that conference championship game or get back to that situation and see what happens. But we're very excited about that. I think there's a there's a lot to sell here, and I think the sky's the limit. And I love the fact that we have so many returners coming back because they've been there. And that makes a big difference when you get in the trenches. Absolutely. And now, uh, just talk about your faith and how you think it will be implemented into the team as far as the leadership and the discipleship as for the season. Well, you know, my relationship with Jesus is everything. First and foremost, you know, before I'm a basketball coach, I'm a believer. And, uh, and my personal walk with Christ is something that comes out in my coaching, uh, whether I'm at a faith-based institution or not. Coming from Bossier Parish Community College, my guys went to church with me every Sunday almost. Uh, you know, we had FCA every week. Um, I led devotionals. We prayed together, you know. And so walking into a situation like East Texas Baptist where – um, a belief system is totally affirmed and promoted, if you will. Um, it's a great opportunity just to extend that discipleship function uh, that's within my DNA as a believer and, and to be able to speak freely about that. And to mold young men is what this is all about. Um, you know, the ball stops bouncing for all of them at some point. It did for me as well. But the thing that never stops is our relationship with Jesus Christ. And so the opportunity to pour into these young men, to disciple them, uh, to uh, watch them grow up to be great husbands, great fathers one day, and great Christ followers is what this is all about. Absolutely. And uh, now let's talk about you from an individual basis as well. Uh, you also had some playing experience in your high school career as well. Uh, was there ever a coach or a certain player that you looked up to when you had your time on the court as a player? Well, that's a, that's a great question. In fact, when you sent me the questions, I was looking, I was like, well, that'll be an interesting one to answer. Um, you know, really, I never had uh, a coach that I would say that I would look back on and go, man, I want to be just like him, um, that, that I played for, um, in, whether when, in my college days or even in my high school days of playing. Um, but I have served under some coaches as an assistant that really shaped me in different ways. Um, and I think all those experiences um, have a, allowed me to kind of develop who I want, who I continue to be as the head coach and have shaped me in some way in that fashion. And one of the guys that really poured into my life that um, really showed me what coaching was all about was a guy named Randy Feemster that I coached with at Trinity Christian back when I first got into high school coaching. I was his assistant for three years. And we won a state championship together on that staff my last year with him. And uh, he just showed me how important it was um, to my, not make everything so critical and life-threatening. You know, coaches sometimes we kind of – every little thing is you know, we die on that hill. And he really allowed me to understand, to kind of sit back and to allow the guys work some things out and to love them through the process because a basketball season is a journey. And what you want to be remembered as is not the guy that, that, that yelled at them every time they made a mistake. What you want to be remembered as is the guy that loved them through their mistakes and allowed them to become the best players and the best people they could be. Absolutely. And uh, you also have some uh, take part in some speaking engagements as well where you go out and encourage people. Uh, so just kind of talk about what it is that you talk about and how much uh, of an impact does it have on your followers? Yeah, I've been on the road full time as an itinerant evangelist for, uh, gosh, probably uh, 10, 12 years now. Um, I've had the opportunity to travel the world, preach the gospel. Uh, that's what it's all about for me is seeing people come to faith in Jesus Christ and growing in that faith. And so when I am on the road and I am speaking and I'm not coaching, uh, that's what we're doing. We're presenting the gospel. Uh, we're giving people an opportunity to respond to the gospel, to come into salvation and repentance. And uh, we're trying to build them up in their knowledge and understanding of the Lord as they continue to walk in this life. And, uh, and, and so, you know, when I'm out speaking, it, it's all about an extended ministry of what I do with my basketball team. And so people listen to me a little different because I'm not necessarily 
on a church staff, uh, or I'm not necessarily just out there as an evangelist. They listen to me a little different because I'm a coach. And so my whole, my whole angle that I come from is that I'm going to coach you up, you know, and do the best I can to coach you up and, and be real with you, you, you know? And so, uh, it's been a great journey, man. I, I love the, the opportunity. Uh, that my speaking ministry gives me uh, to travel the world. I think I speak to roughly to about 50 to 75,000 high school students a year across the country. You're going to need to break a couple NCAA rules to have more people on your roster. So that way that can win you some more games as well. Um, so obviously a uh, final question, of course, um, this is obviously a coaching transition for some of the returners, as you all know, and for the new people uh, that are coming to ETBU as well. And obviously there may be talks about, okay, you know, what does Coach Lovo have that, you know, can bring to the table and help me be a better player and a better person, hopefully win some games as well. But I think we might have a bit of an eye-opening stat uh, that could be interesting. You have a connection with somebody that's currently in the NBA or so. Uh, which player uh, do you have a connection with and how was that formed? Yeah, Julius Randle, who currently plays for the New York Knicks, uh, previously of the New Orleans Pelicans, and then he was drafted by the Lakers uh, when he came out of Kentucky. He actually played for me in high school for three of his four years. And so I'm real close with Julius. Uh, he's a great friend. Um, we've grown together. I remember having him as a freshman and watching him grow, and it's been fun. I've been to see him play, and in Los Angeles. I've been to see him play in New Orleans. I haven't made it up to New York yet uh, with this year because this year was so crazy with everything going on in the world. But uh, that being said, um, yeah, Julius Randle is the guy I have a connection with and uh, I love him to death. And, uh, you know, I've had a bunch of kids come through my coaching career that I thought, hey, this kid's got a chance to be a pro. But Julius is the only one that's actually made it. And it just some guys coach their whole coaching career and never have one kid. That, make it, that makes it to the NBA. And so obviously I'm incredibly proud of him. I'm more proud of the person he is. Absolutely. Well, Coach, uh, we would like to once again welcome you to a uh, new adventure at ETBU, and we hope you continue to stay safe. And we cannot wait for the season to get started. So and, um, obviously here, of course, you have a bunch of thanks as well. Uh, that's going to do it here for another edition of the ETBU Sports Net. Uh, we'll have more on our YouTube channel. Stay tuned.